Hey everyone, welcome back, and today we're here with another Last Epoch video. So, uh, the reason I say another is because I made a uh, update ages ago on uh, on my Shadow Cascade build, and uh, that was because I was taking a break from PoE, and now we're in the same position again. Uh, and just to let you guys know, I did try uh, Diablo 2 Resurrected, but, you know, I didn't actually play Diablo 2 back in the day, so I wasn't getting any nostalgia from it, obviously, and... Uh, yeah, I don't know, I wasn't having too much fun on it. Now, I probably will still give it a go because I didn't, like, play it enough to, like, try and enjoy the game. But um, I found myself coming back to Last Epoch because I didn't have too much time to be playing around and learning a new game. And, uh, yeah, I just want to quickly uh, describe what build I'm playing right now. So we're playing a uh, smite build, a Void Knight smite build, and we're currently in the very early stages of Endgame. And we're doing, like, the echoes and stuff like that. Now, uh, they made a lot of updates since I last played, so it's been really cool to be playing. And uh, they updated, like, the acts as well, I believe. And uh, there was a lot more end game or, like, end of acts process that happened. Like, there was a new boss, and it was, like, in this sandy area and stuff. So it was really cool. Uh, so, yeah, and once we finish acts, the echoes and stuff, like, we've got all this, like... Uh, deterministic rewards right like we've got uh, xp here we've got gold we got uh over here we've got idols so i really like this like you can target farm whatever you want so say if i want to get a new idol i would go here if i want to get a new uh, amulet i would try and go here now you're not guaranteed to drop a good amulet but obviously it's still really nice to have that option of trying to specifically drop that uh, type of item i really really do like that um and yeah, so um, this build is uh, not great unless you have the numlock thing going, right? So we use Devouring Orb, and this is our main clearing skill. Uh, and the problem with Devouring Orb is that if you don't have it on autocast, you are constantly pressing it on cooldown. So the reason why it's a problem is because we already need to press uh, this uh, Sigils of Hope, and we also need to press uh, Anomaly and then Rebuke sometimes. So it feels a bit too much to keep pressing all the time. So having this on autocast, you uh, like do the numpad trick, you allocate the skill to uh, another keybind. So I'll show you what I've done here. So I set it to keypad one, and then you press numlock. Uh, I actually had to get out my keyboard with a numpad to actually do this. Uh, and I know you can set macros, but I I didn't want to bother with that. So I did, because my actual normal keyboard doesn't have a numpad, so yeah. Um, and then what you do, you hold down the key that you assigned it to, and then press numlock uh, while holding it down. And now it should be on autocast, so it's super nice to have this. Uh, and if I didn't have this, I don't know if I'd be playing this build very much longer because it was uh, not enjoyable when I had to keep spamming W. So, yeah, uh, that's what I did there. Uh, and now I just want to show you some gameplay. Um, so I'm going to head over to the idle node, but just for the video, I'm just going to be showing you this. So, yeah, uh, we're currently only like level 65. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'll leave a link to the uh, build guide that I'm following by Boardman21. Uh, he's got so many resources, guys, on this game. Like, if you're completely new, this guy will help you entirely. He will teach you everything that you need to know. So check out his YouTube channel and check out his guides on the forums and stuff because they're just way too useful. So yeah, uh, this is the... Okay, this is not a normal uh, run, right? Because we're just doing an arena wave. So normally you'd go through an echo and like complete the objective. But this one, we're just doing like a mini arena. So as you can see, it's really smooth. I can actually go AFK in this uh, and just press my sigils over here. And uh, yeah, it's super chill, this build. And uh, for single target, we actually use Smite, which is this thing over here. And it actually does quite a lot of damage. Um, and yeah, uh, despite me taking a big hit there, I'm actually quite tanky too. We actually scale a lot of block, uh, endurance. We uh, also scale our damage through vitality as well. So yeah, there's a node for Void Knight, I believe, where you can uh, change attunement to give you damage with vitality instead. So that scales your health and your damage. So I, I've, I've always liked these type of mechanics in games. They've been like super nice to uh, to have that combination of scaling both defensives and offenses. 
So yeah, uh, this is how they usually go. I think I'll show you guys an actual echo too, because this is just like a a complete fiesta that keeps going on and on and on. But as you can see, it's so smooth. I'm just running around pretty much AFK. Uh, and yeah, it's like a bit like an autobomber, to be honest, guys. It's, uh, it's really enjoyable. Uh, it gives you that same gameplay feeling of an autobomber. So yeah. Uh, you do like press the only reason we press this thing here the sigils of hope is because uh, It gives us a lot of damage and you can stack it up to four times So whenever you encounter like a tougher enemy you just spam it a little bit. It does use a lot of mana, but it's uh, It's really good So I don't know how many waves this is. Let's see. It's uh, okay. It's done now. Okay So yeah, that was that uh, super super chill um, And yeah, so we, we just got to level up as well so I'm currently just uh, specking into this stuff. So I think this is what gives the... Yeah, so this is what gives the scaling that I was telling you guys about. It changes the attunement scaling into vitality. Uh, so this node is super nice. And then we scale vitality through other ways and on our gear as well. Um, I don't think I need to go over a gear rundown right now. I guess I'll give you guys a brief one because... Um, you know, I'll show you guys the next update when I have more end game stuff. This is like the early stuff going on here. But uh, let's do one more of these and we'll do like the uh, this echo over here. But first of all, let me just take my rewards uh, because otherwise I'm going to lose out on them. So yeah, we get like some, some stuff here. Uh, pretty cool. And now we'll do this idle one. And I'll show you how the, the deterministic rewards kind of work. Hopefully this is a, not another arena, but it might be. Uh, it looks like it is another arena. That's a shame. Oh, well, uh, I'll still show you guys how it goes. This arena is a bit bigger, so it's uh, it's a bit more normal to show you, I guess. Just running around. And uh, as you can see on the right, if you see here, there's like a, a bunch of modifiers on the on the map. Or I, I'll just call it a map. It's not really called the map, but yeah. So yeah, it's uh, it's pretty nice. You just run around. Um, and yeah, something I found myself doing uh, in this game is uh, once I kind of know where the objective is, or if I know the layout of the area like this, I don't have to use the map, which is quite nice. Uh, because like in an echo, you get like a, an explanation mark of where to go if you kill a certain amount of monsters. So uh, you don't really need the, the map on your whole screen anymore because they're actually like covers up a lot of things uh it makes the visibility a bit worse so yeah uh one thing i really want to talk about about this game that i've uh noticed on and a lot of other people on like reddit have been posting about is that uh this game is so good at telling you uh you know what damage is about to happen to you like this right like you see these void circles on the floor that happen uh when there's any boss in this game has like uh attacks that you can tell what's going to happen you can just like see everything that's going to happen and it's up to you whether you're going to dodge it or tank it uh and you always get time to do that and i've always and um, noticed this about this game and it's been so nice to have that because you're not getting overwhelmed by things that you can't tell what's happening so yeah this is one really really good thing about this game that's just so nice because it's really annoying to just die to things that you just don't know what happened. Because that's something that you experience a lot with PoE. And uh, that's something I, I actually don't like. Because even though I mainly play softcore on PoE and like if you die it's not that bad. It's just dying in general just doesn't feel good. Because obviously you lose XP and you lose time as well. So I don't really like dying at all in PoE. Uh, even as a softcore player. So yeah I don't know. Like even on this character right now I'm deathless. Uh, and uh, I don't know it's just been it's been so nice because I've just been able to react to everything uh, which is you know something that I'm not used to <laughs> because in PoE you just get overloaded sometimes but yeah uh, that is another showcase over there and now uh, that's how you get the rewards there's like a little thing in in the middle there and uh, you can see you get all these idols that we target farmed for uh, now obviously like these things aren't always going to be good right like you're not always going to get something good here but like that's just the the part of it it's like the RNG but that's completely fine the fact that you can actually target farm specific things is super cool I really enjoy that and uh, yeah that's pretty much it 
Um, I've just uh, been playing this and I'm probably going to play a bit more. Uh, I'll let you guys know what happens in my endgame update and I'll quickly go over the current gear I have if you guys are interested in seeing what like you can do uh, with like as bad gear as I have. So we just have some random wand here with cast speed and multiplier. Now honestly guys, I'm not too knowledgeable about this game so I might have like really bad mods on some things. Uh, I'm trying to follow the guide as much as possible so it shouldn't be too terrible. Uh, we're using this chess piece here that I'm meaning to replace soon, but the only reason I'm using it is because it gives a bunch of armor, and uh, armor is actually really good in this game because uh, it reduces all your damage taken, even though it's only at 20% value for non-physical, it's still a mitigation to have, so it's super, super good. Uh, let me just stop this thing going off, this anomaly. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so armor is actually pretty good. Uh, and then we have this shield over here, uh, which gives block chance, block effectiveness, uh, armor, and endurance. Endurance is another really, really good mitigation. So it gives you the, it, it basically reduces the damage dealt to your health below your threshold. And then it has an example there. If you have 50% endurance and an endurance threshold of 100, all damage dealt to you to your last 100 health will be reduced by 50%. So that's pretty nice to have on top. And when you stack all these layers on top, it's super nice. Uh, as you can see, my resists are pretty good apart from poison. I really need to work on my poison resist. But as you can see, like we're doing pretty well on the other ones. Uh, and then the helmet, we have some vitality. Now this still needs to be uh, upgraded. And then another really important stat in this game, at least for this build, is crit critical strike avoidance. Uh, this really helps as well because... I think it's so many enemies in this game actually crit, so uh, yes, yeah, I don't know. It's pretty good to have this, uh, and you usually want to get about like 90%, I believe, 90 to 100%, which is kind of good. Uh, and right now, I don't know, I just feel really tanky, um, which is nice. I know it took a big chunk in the, in the preview, but that was because I wasn't paying as much attention. Uh, and then... Yeah, that's pretty much it, and some health. And as you can see, the implicits. Now, something you'll notice about this game is that the implicits of the items are very important. In PoE, they're still important, but in this game, they're like on another level of important. So um, you can see here that this implicit gives increased avoid damage. So this is a really good implicit for us. On this one, you can see that the implicit is a uh, 38 adaptive spell damage. This is really, really good. Like this uh, amount of damage you get from just the implicit alone is really high. So it's really nice to have that. As you can see, the implicit on this is 38 physical resistance, 34 necrotic resistance. That is a lot, by the way. You can't usually get that much. Uh, I mean, you can on your, like your affixes, but it's nowhere near as good at having it on the implicit because you can get other stuff on the affixes. So as you can see now, this amulet is fractured, unfortunately, but we do have some nice health, resists, some void penetration uh, and yeah I probably won't be changing this for a while until I get something better uh, and then what else we got a so we want to run two of these um, coral rings coral rings give you five vitality now something you guys might be wondering is like oh five vitality gosh that's kind of bad isn't it so it's really not uh, vitality each point gives 10 health and 2% health regen so that's 50 health right there uh, which is crazy, right? And that's the implicit of the item. And not only that, it's also scaling our damage, if you remember, on our passive tree. So 5 vitality is a big deal. Like, it's actually quite good. So, yeah. Uh, we also have crit avoidance on here and endurance. Now, the other two, the increased fizz damage is useless for us. The freeze rate multiplier is useless for us. But obviously, we're still looking for upgrades. I haven't come across many coral rings yet. Otherwise, I would have switched the uh, jade ring over here. This one has some crit, some res, and some physical resistance. We have a belt here, uh, and it's got some res and life. And uh, we also have something really nice on it, which is cleanse elements on potion use. I think this is a really cool uh, affix to have, and I would uh, recommend trying to get it. Um, because whenever you get like bled or something, I'm pretty sure it just gets rid of it, or poisoned. But I'm not exactly sure on what the elements are in this game, but... It can't hurt to have this, right? Uh, next up, we have the gloves over here with some cast speed, some res, and necrotic res. 
uh, Ellie Res, sorry, and Necrotic Res. I do want to change these, but they do give a decent amount of cost speed. Some boots with some crit avoidance, some resist, some move speed. But uh, the actual base, as you can see here, 18% move speed, 19 cold res, 30 armor. Like, this base is so good, guys. Like, as you can see, the bases in this game are just so impactful. So it's really important you get a good base. And then finally, we have a pretty bad relic that we need to change. But it gives a uh, crit chance, void damage, some res that we don't actually need. I guess the void res is nice uh, from the implicit. And it uh, gives increased armor, which is nice too. But I, I picked this up a really long time ago. And uh, yeah, if you guys are wondering what I actually did for leveling, I used a leveling guide by Boardman21. And I actually was using uh, Warpath and another skill. Uh, I think it was, uh, I can actually tell you guys here. I was using a raising strike. Um, like I was using a melee build for leveling. And then when I switched to the echoes or the maps, I uh, started picking up items uh, that I needed for this build and then eventually uh, respec out. So yeah, um, I'll be leaving all the resources in the description down below, like Bone Man's channel, his forum guide of this build and the leveling guide. Make sure you go check them out if you actually want to play this build as well. I think it's a lot of fun, guys. I really think you should try this build out. It's really nice. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.